Welcome to the Bob Wellness HealthCast, episode number 337, Why Some Doctors Only Take Cash. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the hottest topics in America today is what can we do, if anything, what do we need to do to revise the American healthcare system? There are major mega size players and there are little bit players and there are ordinary people who are all caught up in this matrix of the healthcare delivery system of the United States. And everybody acknowledges that it needs to be changed, but almost no one agrees or understands what needs to be changed, why and how. So we thought we'd put our two cents worth in today to try to clarify some of the things, or at least share some of the things that we think about the way the healthcare system is working and ways that we think that it might work better. Remembering always that the goal is for us to, to recommend good, adequate health care. What consists of good, adequate health care so that people are well, get well, uh, get treatment that's appropriate and affordable, preferably, if, if it's possible. Some things it's so expensive, it, it may not be possible. Uh, and what should be the role of governments and corporations in all that? How do we get, get a system where patients can establish a relationship with a physician that they trust, that they know to take care of them, that the doctors can provide that care and make an adequate living, a decent living, a respectable living? Uh, where does the buck stop? Who's in control of it? We'll talk about the FDA and the regulations of the government. We'll talk about insurance mandates. We'll talk about pharmacies and pharmacy contracts with uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies that provide the drugs. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about all the different little bits and pieces that exist in the status quo. And when the government starts talking about changing large scale the way healthcare systems work in America, they're talking about changing a system that represents a fifth to a sixth of the American economy. And the current mass system is what we call Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. And the Republicans who are in charge of the government right now want to get rid of Obamacare and replace it with their own plan. No one agrees on either side about what ought to be done. So we thought we'd start with just some basic definition of terms, some concepts, and talk about what, how we understand and what that means to us. Okay. So uh, let's start with the term individual mandate. What does that mean? I don't really know what an individual mandate is because I'm a doctor and that's a political term. Okay. It's a political term. What it means is that the government mandates, it requires by law that an individual must have a health insurance policy mm -hmm. and that if they do not have a health insurance policy, they can be charged a fine. Now that's on a sliding scale and they've created all kinds of ways that if you're poor, and you can't afford it, the government will actually give you the money and say, now you have to spend it on this. Right. But, but we have, we already have health care for the poor, Medicaid, health care mm -hmm. for the old, Medicare. So those are two systems that tax dollars pay for. You got those reversed. Medicaid yeah, is, is poor. Medicaid care is old. Medicare is old. Okay. So we have two systems, I'm sorry, to yeah. deal with that. So... That your tax dollars are going to pay for that, mm -hmm. right? And right. and there's a specific um, withhold in your paycheck for Medicare that funds Medicare, supposedly to fund your Medicare when you hit that age if the money lasts. Right. So those two programs are already out there. Right. That's part of the existing system. Right. And then we're looking for a system that covers everybody else, the working population, right. people who make over poverty level. And are not covered by these other two systems. Or people that don't make over poverty level. The people that don't make anything at all. The government is still saying under Obamacare, these people need to have insurance. But that just forces them to go into Medicaid. It forces them to fill out the forms and be, get a Medicaid card. There's many people who are poor that don't do that. Right. And you can't, if you are poor, you get Medicaid. That's just, that's just part of the deal of being an American. 
We do take care of poor people and old people. The problem is, in the middle, the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies have taken advantage of the working population in the middle and the doctors that take care of them mm -hmm. and have taken that middle piece and said, Ooh, this is a cash cow. Right. And it is. And it is for them. Right. And they, all they do is manage the money that pays out and they limit what you can get. They tell your doctor what you can get, what, what they'll pay for. Therefore they're practicing medicine, but all they are are money changers. They are banks mm -hmm. and they have a huge structure that's very expensive and they trade on the stock exchange, which I think is wrong. And they use your, your money that you pay in for your health care for this huge structure that really does nothing but pay the bills. So that is one of the most fundamental problems and neither Obamacare nor the Ryan plan address that right. because no one wants to go up against insurance companies because they're so powerful. They have so much money and they have so much power because they have money right. that we, the little guy as patients, because I'm a patient and a doctor who have insurance, we see our rates going up, up and up and up, even on Obamacare. Right. And we see our deductibles going up. Here's how I watched it go. In the 80s, they said, oh, come into our office. We're going to change health care. We're going to make, we're going to give you lots of patients by you joining this HMO. Right. And we're going to pay you a certain amount per patient, per hysterectomy, per delivery, per office visit. And it was generous. It wasn't cheap. It wasn't discounted. And so we all went, well, great, more patients. I was full. I didn't need more patients, but right. fine, I'll sign up. So we sign up. And then at the beginning, it's free to the patient. They pay their... They pay their um, Deductible. They pay... Copay. Copay. And they didn't even have copays at the beginning. So the first thing was free to the patient, good pay to the doctor. They had this all planned. Every year, what they paid us went down. Right. Every year, the co the copay went up a little bit. They got a copay, then the copay went up, then it right. went up. And then when patients said, no way, I can't pay this right. to go to the doctor. I'm not going to the doctor, so I'm getting really sick and going to the ER. Then they all of a sudden said, oh, well, then we're going to give you a deductible, which nobody understood. And that means you pay for your own care for the first $1,000 or mine's $6,000 now. $6,000 you pay for out of pocket so for you every year for, family. for me individually. For you individually. So if you have a family, it's six more. grand a person. Right. So that's a small business. At your insurance. Yeah. At small business. And that's, right. that's the total cost for a small business. So, so basically they said... They just outpriced it. And every time they increased what they charged the patient, they decreased what they paid the, the doctor. So the only person that really got this, that they were doing, they were, um, it's a shell game. Was the accountant at the was, insurance company. Was the accountant at the insurance company. And they had a plan. Like us doctors, right. we're out there practicing medicine. We don't have a plan. We're just trying to take care of people. And we're trying to get paid so we can pay our employees and we can pay our bills. Yeah. Every year it got worse. So now it's to the point where doctors go, I can't pay payroll, right. pay for all the things the government the requires, training, the equipment, like HIPAA yeah. and OSHA. OSHA and CLIA, all these different things they demand of us. All of our all of our Legal licensures legally have to have to be in compliance. Right, we have so to be in compliance. Provide medicine. Right. So they every year they give us more things that cost more, right. and they pay us less. Medicare pays us less. Medicaid pays us so little that many doctors don't take it. So it's one of those things where we end up in a, it, this is how it happened. This is the history. And the insurance companies now have gone, great, we are, we're set. Both parties, Democrats and Republicans, are still on our side. They still are taking our, you know, the, the, the guys that come in and say, hey, you want to go play golf? You know, that kind of stuff. They're still being influenced by them. And their campaigns are influenced by them because they give money to their campaigns. So we're, we are literally screwed. Both doctors and patients in America who work and who contribute to their insurance have been outpriced. And no one's stopping it. It just keeps going up. But everybody complains about it. It's kind of like the weather. But we they can't the do anything bad, about it. They can't do anything about Part it. Part of it is because the employer is in between many times. Many times your employer buys your insurance and negotiates it. And so you get whatever your employer decides on. And if they want it, if they don't make enough. Whatever they can afford right. and negotiate in the marketplace. Right. You know, so some people say, well, the answer to this is pure 
free market capitalism. Get the this government is out of free, it altogether. This, well, yeah, if you took let, the government out of it, but they will never get out of it. The insurance companies will always be in it. But the argument is, if you took the government out of it and you let the insurance companies and the doctors and the patients and the pharmacies negotiate among themselves that the imperatives of the capitalist system will cause it to, to work, that the prices will come down. Right. Now, that's not true, and it doesn't work, but that's what they say. Because you can't take government out of it fully. Well, no, you can't, because you can't. who's going to regulate the purity of the drug? Who's going to regulate access to who can prescribe the drug or deliver the drug? Who's going to regulate not what's even involved that. in hospital care? Not even that. The government has already made a law that if you go to the ER, you have to be treated, even if right. you go to the ER for a stupid reason. Right. Even if you go because you don't have you a have doctor a and you, you have, have a cough. You're, you know, I, I worked in an ER in Kansas City when I was a resident, yeah. and this is a long time ago, but it still happens because I've talked to the pediatric residents where people who were indigent, didn't have money, had Medicaid, would wrap their babies up, make right. them so hot they that they fever. had a fever, bring them to the hospital, to the ER. They right. had to take them in. They take them in and then they go, oh, so they don't have a fever. They're not sick. They'd run a bunch of tests, right. cost a ton of money, and then the parents were nowhere to be found. They went off for the weekend. It was a babysitter. That happened to us over and over and over again. I was horrified. But because the government says we have to, even if we know this is a repeat offender doing right. this, right. we have to take them in. We have to work them up. So the hospitals have to do this right. unless that's called the MTALA law. Unless that is overturned, which I don't foresee, uh, and, and in many ways it shouldn't be overturned. It should be, if you go for a good reason, then you should be seen. Because they used to shift off heavy, they, expensive cases would come in, somebody with a head injury, the hospital would go, no, we, we, we're full, we can't take that, and they'd send you somewhere else. Right. Because they didn't want to pay for that. They knew it was going to be a loser. Right. So you do have to protect people from that. Mm -hmm. But but this is the, the protection, as usual, was over-the-top protection. And they didn't put in those, those kind of uh, so limitations. One of, one of the strategies to counteract that kind of behavior has been to try to provide insurance for people to provide well care. So mm -hmm. that families that are poor, that are in that situation... Not the ones that want a babysitter for the weekend, right. but the ones that bring their child to the emergency mm -hmm. room ostensibly because they have a fever, but because mm -hmm. their shots are due. Right. And so they're going to the hospital. Well, we don't, don't see a cause for the fever, but your shots are due. Let's get your shots. Right. So that is the most expensive way to obtain healthcare shot and health care. So there's ER saying, care is very expensive. If we provide health care and well care, and, and so then you talk about access to care. Right. And as opposed to uh, insurance. Right. You know? Well, so, access is part of it. Pay, well, it is. It, affordable access and quality are the three things that healthcare needs to have. Right. And I've been told by many business people that in any business, you can't have efficiency, quality, and low price. You have to choose two of the three. That's one of those Collins, you know, Mr. Collins wrote the books on, on business. That's kind of one of his tenets. Mm -hmm. And I find it to be true. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to have all of that. So societally, people are trying to make a decision to say, all right, it's inefficient to do care for everybody, especially through the, poor, the ER. Through the ER. So can we create an insurance system where these poor people have insurance and are more likely then to go to a regular physician mm -hmm. that knows them, knows their families, knows how to treat them, knows what they need, mm -hmm. and get that care provided for them? And who's going to pay for it? Mm -hmm. And and so then you start to have the question of, are there limits? Mm -hmm. Are there limits on the lower end mm -hmm. uh, for what people are charged? Are there limits on the upper end for what people can get? Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at Well, you data, have to limit those. I mean, if you want any... So to have enough doctors, but we're not willing to do, this, to do that. At least we're so not far, we're not society's willing to not do. Willing to do that. We want all three, and it's not working. Right. So that's why people are trying to figure out a way to survive. People right. are trying to find a way to to work within or around the existing system. And by the way, over, around the world, there is no system that works well. I understand that. So that we can't look so, to so, so another it's a system. Every culture. It's a problem in every society. 
In our culture, one of the things that people are beginning to do to try to survive within the system is that doctors are beginning to establish what they're, what's called direct pay, cash-based practices. They don't deal with insurance companies at all. Uh, when I was a provider for mental health, insurance companies would call me and say, will you be one of our established providers? And I said, well, what's that involved? And they would send me like a 45-page contract that would tie me in knots in fine print for things I could or couldn't do, could or couldn't bill for. And they would say, we'll, if, if you'll sign this contract with us, then we'll feed you patients. And you have to negotiate a de decreased rate. So if, if my average cost was that I'd charge a patient $100, the insurance company would sign a contract with me and say, we'll give you a lot of patients, but you can only charge our patients, the ones that have our insurance, $70. And that's how they would work out the deal. Right. So and I'd every say, year it goes down. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll do that. And thinking that I would schedule those lower cost patients in off hours, mm -hmm. early in the morning, mm -hmm. late in the evening, mm -hmm. but not in the high dollar premium mm -hmm. time that I could get $100 for. That's so access. Four o'clock in the afternoon. That's access. You can get access for $100. Yeah. You can't get access for $70. Right. The insurance company said, oh, no, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. I know. So that's then, part of the rules. Then I would say, okay, well, these people tend to make appointments and then not show up. Right. So I've lost money. Right. So I want to charge them for the missed appointment. Mm -hmm. The insurance contract would say, oh, oh, no, you can't do that. So right. they would hamper you. Then they would say, you, you have to call. You can't earn a you, living You can't this use way. your professional judgment that you're trained and licensed to have. You have to call our deciders. And who are not counselors who are well, not trained number. counselor it's a phone number and it's and somebody they have a who computer. has the computer no says oh this is, this is worth four sessions you know and they'd say what do they okay, know you can give well their insurance program told i mean their their computer their program. money changes so you can give them. four sessions uh, if you do it within this time window and you can bill for that if not if you're not within the time window or if you go over the four sessions you can't charge for that uh, then they say, you need to, and I'd call and say, wait a minute, you, that's not going to work. We need to do something. So there's a committee that you can call and you can talk to the committee mm -hmm. uh, of psychologists and they decide whether or not, oh, okay, we're going to give this. But you have to spend coverage. an hour talking to the committee, but you can't charge for that. Right. You can't charge anybody for that. So what you're so, spending the hours, unlike lawyers, yeah. you can charge for every minute of their time, phone calls. Fit, yeah. phone calls, they can charge for everything. They don't have any rules on that because of course right. they're the legislators too. So <laughs> yeah, they, they protect so. themselves. Right. So they can do that. And they, everybody assumes we do that. Like right. I would go to the ER. So if somebody comes to the ER at a hospital. They're being charged by the doctor in the ER and the, and the ER. And they get two separate bills. Two separate bills. Now, wait a second. And then I'd go down because they'd call me and say, you need to see your patient. She's right. my patient. I've seen her before. Right. I want to see her. I need to decide on surgery and stuff. Right. I spend an hour, an hour. I spend an hour with her. her. Yeah. I can't bill her. Right. I don't get paid for that hour. Right. That just, right. and if she doesn't need surgery, then I'm not getting paid. So so these are the rules that they they tie us. Up. So it's like the Lilliputians uh, tying down the giant and uh, Gulliver. Yeah. And so Gulliver is trying to find a way around that. And what some have done, what I did when I was still in practice, mm -hmm. is say I'm cash only. Mm -hmm. I only do cash. I do not deal with insurance companies. I don't work for them. I don't fill out their reports. I don't secure payment for you and give it back to you. Mm -hmm. You pay me. I'll give you the paperwork that I generate. Which is what I do. And then you deal with your own insurance company. And most insurance companies will give them then what are called out-of-network reimbursements. Mm -hmm. uh, the network doctors, they don't pay as much to the the, the uh individual person who goes to see the doctor mm -hmm. in network. If they go to an out of doctor network, their insurance won't pay them as much. They'll say, all right, for knee surgery, for an in network doctor, if you have to have a knee replacement, uh, we will pay $15,000. If you go to an out of network doctor, we'll pay seven. This is not for the doctor. The doctor doesn't get $15,000. I'm just picking numbers. They get like Fifteen three dollars. They get like fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. And then your bill is really just the hospital and the operating room and anesthesia. And your doctor gets like almost well, nothing for the bill training. From the anesthesiologist. Right. You get a separate bill from, from the, the hospital, hospital and then and the you get doctor. A separate bill from whatever all the, the doctors doctor. that you've seen. Right. And, and but if the they doctor bring in, that if they're did the surgery, the hall, and somebody's walking by and they say, Come look at this interesting case. No, you can't send a bill for that. So you if you're the surgeon, it's everything you did, it's the pre-operative care in the office, it's the post-operative care, right. and it's the care in the operating room, and it's the malpractice, and it's the risk, and it's the skill. And if it takes you five hours and if it takes you one hour, it's the same fee. Right. 
So doctors are constrained by that, and no doctors who are in the hall can't bill you. It's your anesthesiologist. It's your surgeon. It's an assistant, and that's billed by the hospital. But if they bring hospital. that doctor in and ask his advice on something, what oh do you well, think about this? if I have if I open somebody up and they've got a cancer, and I need a cancer surgeon, right. and I bring him in, they can bill like they'll bill like two hundred bucks. They'll get paid sixty bucks for walking in the room and telling me what to do. Okay, so they could bill a thousand bucks. They're still going to get sixty dollars from I, the insurance company. I'm not arguing with you at all because mm -hmm. I don't know this stuff. But I have talked to a number of people who've gotten bills from the hospital that have all kinds of doctor and you know what happens on the bill. Have you ever seen the, they what, what they get know. paid? No, I have not. So then you see what you get paid after that, and they say we're not, the insurance company goes not paying that, not paying that, not paying that. So the hospital pads the bill, okay, because so they why. know that's the that they're not going to get paid right. for many of these these things. So they pad the bill. So that's why a band aid, a band aid, costs you seventeen dollars. Maybe. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I haven't looked at Band-Aid costs in hospitals well, yet. I mean, You look at your hospital bill. It has all kinds of little charges for that. I think you haven't been in the hospital for a while. Well, I haven't been. The no, hospitals, somebody keeps me healthy. The hosp yeah, that's me. <laughs> the hospitals um, basically will have a global fee for a global procedure. So you have a colonoscopy. They pay the doctor. The insurance will pay the doctor this. I don't care what they charge. They'll pay, no matter what's on your bill, they'll pay the doctor this, they'll pay the hospital this, they'll pay anesthesia this. And that's it. They so figured this out. There are outpatient clinics that just do colonoscopies. Right. That's not the hospital. No. That's an outpatient clinic. And that's they, one of the ways doctors have gotten around this. And they set their own prices or they get that amount from the insurance company that doesn't go to the hospital because the whole hospital costs more money. Hospital always costs more money because it's covering all the indigent yes. care, all the people who don't who are don't have Medicare, Medicaid, and or all the insurance. Costs, the stuff you have to have there that you may not be using today. Right. You may not you have, have a brain be... surgery today, but you have to have a brain surgeon and you have to have an operating room for them to use and the equipment mm -hmm. that they need. You have to have all of the Yes, you have to have all everything that you need for the worst case scenario. But in a colonoscopy shop, you don't. You don't. You have to have a very small, very minimal surgery center right. that just does colonoscopies, and that's a that's lower cost. So you can that and, surgery and center. And there's a hemorrhoid shop where they just do hemorrhoids. Well, I always send people like lots of people have to pay for their own. Not in this state, mammograms, but in Illinois, they have to pay for. Because I, that's, that's my, one that's my law. State by state by state. My law was in 2002 that women should have their mammogram and their, um, and, and their pap smears and cancer, uh, preventive treatment covered in the state of Missouri. And so it is covered. You, you don't have to pay for that. You, you say that's my law. You actually wrote that law. I wrote for the, the law. Legislative committee. And for the governor it. that got, yeah. that was then after he brought all the points of my law up, including breast reconstruction. Mm -hmm. He then, because he needed a women's issue, mm -hmm. then used what I said women need, and then that became law, and it's never been overturned. Right. Good. So in our state, insurance has to pay for mammograms, but in other states, they don't. So I tell people to go to a mammogram center mm -hmm. and not a hospital, because hospital mammograms are much higher. And there are MRI centers for the right. same reason. I mean, so so... The capitalist system is trying to work, and mm -hmm. doctors are trying to find a way to survive and make costs less for patients, but still give good care. There are a lot more things to say about direct pay, direct care for doctors who are taking cash. There's some very creative things that are starting to happen, and there are a lot of challenges that still have to be resolved, no matter which way the government goes with Obamacare, Ryan Care, Trump Care, who cares? Uh, World Health Organization. Yeah. So yeah, sure. please come back next week and listen to that discussion. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.